So my name is uh, Kamel Lajli. I work as an application development consultant in uh, Bochum, in Germany. Actually, a lot of people uh, don't know there is a big R&D site from Bay in Bochum. We develop products there, so we did a lot of, on the old platform, and now we work with the BlackBerry 10 devices as well. So there are roughly 300 engineers working there. I'm not, I'm not sure if I need a mic because the audience is quite small, so can you hear me over there? So it's all right. Okay. So welcome to my talk. It's about how to port Android applications to the BlackBerry 10 platform. But uh, before we, we talk about the details, I'd like to show you BlackBerry 10 because I assume a lot of you never touch a BlackBerry 10 device yet. So I'd like to switch to my corporate device and very quick two minutes then show you some features. So this is, uh, <coughs> this is actually the, the grid. So that's very, I think, common between all the smartphone, modern smartphones of today, I would say. Uh, what you see here is are the running applications. I can have up to eight tiles, which I can, uh, with the one flip, I can then bring the foreground or push them back to background. Uh, I can actually have as much as I, as I want because BlackBerry, uh, the, the OS is the QNX and it is a real-time operating system multitasking. Uh, the issue is if they are not there, then they are pooled, they are still in memory, I can bring them very quick to, 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 to the usage. Uh, the device is uh, controllable through swipes. That was the design principle cinematic experience, which we, we, uh, we actually uh, we defined a bunch of design principles. One of them was this cinematic experience is the fact that you, you don't have buttons or menus or whatever. You should be able to use the device uh, through and control it through swipes. So for example, when I go here and swipe from the button to the top and move to the right, then I, I am in my BlackBerry hub. We call it the hub because it's, uh, let's say, the central place where you have all your communication with the outside world. You see here my Gmail accounts and my, my corporate uh, email account, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and all of that. So um, um, I, can, uh, I can move to my grid, fire up more applications. Anywhere where I am, I can always, with one swipe, land in my BlackBerry hub. Uh, another feature which is interesting to see in BlackBerry 10 is the keyboard. So we, BlackBerry is very famous with its BlackBerry keyboard, and because we have a full touch device now, we wanted to have it as good as possible, like the physical keyboard. And we put really a lot of effort to implement that, that uh, keyboard. I'd like to show you uh, only for a few seconds. There. So I have here, no, uh, just open an editor, and I, I start typing. And you see the, the, the words that are proposed on top of the letters which I'm supposed to or uh, with the system guesses, I will type uh, the next. So for example, hi guys, I just wanted to tell you something. So it's uh, to let you know, etc. So it's actually very convenient for one hand usage, I would say, and uh, for, let's say, business people. So along with, uh, you see here the, the running applications, I have actually two Android applications, which you can't distinguish them from the native applications. And, and that was what, one of our intentions as well, to have a runtime in the system which allows you to run uh, Android applications, but as well Air applications and other applications, web applications, which you will not be able to distinguish or the user will not be uh, able to distinguish. One of them is this uh, famous uh, pool billiard here. You see it's very fluent because we did hardware acceleration to all OpenGL calls. So if your Android application uses OpenGL, you have the, hard the hardware acceleration out of the box. Um, let me kick it once here. <laughs> or uh, there is the other application here, which is a photo editor, a sort of photo editor. Uh, I, can I can access the, the native um, file picker and can sele select files. I can access uh, the native camera. I have the camera UI here. Um, I can take pictures, I can switch between the cameras, let's say here, and all its functionality is available to the Android applications as well. All right, uh, yeah, another feature which is really uh, important and uh, is makes us different from the other smartphones is the balance feature. Actually, in my system here, w we, we, we have, in fact, two systems. There is the personal area, the personal permitter, and the work permitter. The work permitter is completely managed by the system administrator. The data is encrypted. I'm sorry, I have to swap of water. <coughs> So uh, switching between personal and work permit is very easy, should be 
as I said, cinematic experience, only uh, through a swipe. So I just swipe here anywhere on my grid, and then I can s switch to the work permitter. And then you see I have another background, I have another uh, um, collection of applications. All of them have been pushed or, or loaded by my system administrator. I, it, it's actually the, the management of that work permitter is not in my hand as user, it's in the hand of my system administrator. Again, with a simple swipe here, I can switch to the personal permitter, and then I have my words. Applications like, for example, pictures. Here in the personal permitter, I have my p private pictures, and if I switch to the work permitter and start the same application, I will only see pictures which are in the work permitter, and they are completely uh, separated, both permitters. The, uh, once I decide to leave the company, for example, the system administrator can wipe my device, delete everything which is in the work permitter, but all the personal stuff will remain in my, uh, in my device. Okay, very quick, uh, uh, an introduction to the BlackBerry 10 OS. Let's jump now into the presentation. Okay, so in BlackBerry 10, actually, we support uh, four SDKs. We have a native SDK where you can use C and C++ to develop applications, either core native using uh, open source libraries and um, uh, if you, you do your own rendering with OpenGL, OpenAL and all of that, or we have an application framework which is built on top of Qt, we call it Cascades. It allows you uh, animations, 3D animations and all of that. Uh, you can be a web developer and use your web development tool to develop applications and we have tools which will package that web asset to a native application, BlackBerry native application. You can do uh, Air development or Flash development and of course uh, we are at DroidCon then we support Android, we support an, uh, Android applications. So we have an Android runtime. What is it? So it's actually a port of Gingerbread 2.3.3. Uh, when we started the project, that was actually the truly open source um, um, uh, Android platform at that, at, that, at that time, and we stick to it. Uh, I can tell you we are working on, uh, on Jelly Beans on 4.1. Uh, I can't tell when it will be ready, but we promised we will bring it uh, uh, this year here. But at the moment, we support 2.3.3. So it enables Android applications to, to run on BlackBerry 10 and on the Playbook, and it has a deep integration into the native framework. As I said before, so actually we, we hardware accelerated every OpenGL call in the platform, which you don't get out of the box normally. You have to do it yourself when you do a, uh, an Android port. Or uh, the media framework, we use the native media framework. If you play videos or play, play media, Media, then you will use the media, the, the native media framework. So we try to 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 to, to bring it uh, or to tight it as uh, as or to 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 adapt it as tight as possible to the native platform. Um, to uh, for for the sake to make the Android application look as native as possible as well. <coughs> Uh, we estimate actually roughly 70% of the Google Play are compatible with the BlackBerry Android runtime. So there are some limitations. Some of them are technical kind of limitations. For example, the Bluetooth and NFC APIs, they are still not available for Android applications. And some of them, I would say, probably rather political <laughs> decisions, like uh, not allowing native libraries to run in the BlackBerry Android runtime. So I think the philosophy behind it, or the decision behind it, is so when you when your Android application needs native, because it uses a lot of ciphering, compression, and all of that. So we have a native platform in C and C++. Why the heck should you go through Android to, to port your application to, uh, to, to BlackBerry? You can use our native platform, and you have uh, uh, awesome and high-performance applications. Uh, there is another limitation, which is as well a political limitation, I would say. So the Android applications, I showed you the work permitter and the personal permitter. The Android applications, they are not allowed on the work permitter. So they can't be pushed by the system administrator to be installed. At the moment, it's like this. I don't know if um, there will be, it will be changed one day. I don't know if you don't know something. But uh, it's, it's not technical. It's rather more business or political decision. Uh, we have a full compatibility list online. You can go and check it if you like. So at uh, developer.blackberry.com slash android slash API support. Uh, last time I was here and I was talking actually about the Android runtime for the playbook because at that time we didn't have any, play, uh, any BlackBerry 10 devices. So that's why this talk is more focused on what's new in BlackBerry 10. So if someone of you already developed for the BlackBerry playbook uh, or ported an Android application to, to the playbook, uh, uh, there are here some new 
new things than re relevant to the BlackBerry 10 platform. So first of all, the, first of all, the support of the virtual keyboard, the virtual keyboard, the, the BlackBerry native keyboard, which I showed you before. So uh, that's, that's available for uh, Android applications. Then we implemented support of, for the notifications. You, you have seen the hub before. I said that's the central location where you have all the communication. But notifications as well land in that, uh, in that hub. If, uh, for example, there is an update of your application, there is a new version of, or you have a, a reminder of your calendar, or you have a clock alarm, or whatever. And Android application will put their notifications in that hub as well. And you will see a red star on the icon of your application. So that's as well for the sake of having Android applications as looking as native as possible. Then uh, the multimedia content created by Android applications. At the Playbook time, it was actually available for Android applications. There was no mix-up. But now, everything which is uh, created on, in, uh, by Android applications is available as well for the other native applications then. Uh, then we, we added a, a bunch of uh, uh, intent support, new intent support. Uh, we have actually in the native platform a, a very a complete share framework. You can share your created data uh, using the share framework via Bluetooth, NFC, uh, email, SMS, and all of that. And we are working to, to bring the whole sh share framework to, to the Android as well. But at the moment, you can share your content or your application uh, through email or SMS with others at the moment only. You can uh, create calendar appointments using the calendar, the native calendar applications. Uh, and the, you can add information to contacts, like phone number or email. You can create uh, um, a, a new contacts. You can, um, you can uh, invoke a contact a contact picker to let the user select a contact out of the list. Um, if you have links in your data, in your content, in your Android content, you can, uh, and you click, and the user clicks on the link, the native browser will be fired and not the Android browser. And we have a dialer support, so if you have implemented the um, a fun functionality, like when you have a phone number, you click on it, and your call is created, that's supported as well. And we have a file picker then if you need to, to process some files, like the, the, the application which I showed, uh, to, uh, which opens images and processes them. Then we extended the API support for, for camera. So you can access the camera and use its functionality from within your Android application. Uh, flash as well, and autofocus. Autofocus, I think, very relevant to applications like, for example, barcode, scanning, and all of that. Uh, we support in-app payments, so if you are selling digital goods in your Android applications, that's supported when you bring your applications to BlackBerry. And push as well, and uh, we extended the sensor support to ambient light sensor and proximity sensor. Of course, the GPS and um, accelerometer, etc. It was already supported in the playbook then. It's available there. Telephony API, we are working on that still. So uh, it's not complete yet, but uh, things like uh, uh, to which network am I camped on, to which carrier that's available, then you can get it. For uh, the, uh, the other BlackBerry 10 devices, the ones with the physical keyboard, the first uh, product is Q10. We extended the uh, support as well so that uh, we have the, um, the, the new, we support the new resolutions, uh, 720 by 720. And uh, we, we support the, the physical keyboard and related shortcuts to that physical keyboard as well. Um, OK, there, are, there is an issue with maps. Because we said, OK, we don't support, um, generally, we don't support any Google APIs as they are. So there is no Google Maps APIs which you can use in your Android applications. We, we recommend to, to, to change your code in a way that you, you have a web view, and in that web view, you can display a map. You are not, li you are not tied to, the, to Google Maps. You can use Bing or OpenStreetMap, uh, as far as I know. Whatever it is uh, available through a, web, uh, uh, through a web view. How would you do it? That's just an example here. You would create a web view object here. You would allow JavaScript on that. And then uh, using load URL, you would, dis you would uh, invoke a drawing of the map at the locations you'd like to have. And I think you can as well overlay the map and bring some um, um, graphic objects on it. Um, In-app payment, probably a couple of uh, more uh, details about the in-app payment. So um, 
if you are, as I said, if you are using, if you are selling digital goods in your Android applications, you can still do the same when your application is ported. You can continue using the same item IDs. We call, we call them in BlackBerry SQs. You have to, to define them in the vendor portal. Uh, a couple of uh, things to remember. For example, here you can't have um, parallel purchase operations ongoing. We don't uh, support refunding through APIs. If someone orders something and, I don't know, change his mind and like to get the money back, it's not supported through APIs, but of course it's supported through the uh, front, uh, storefront uh, management. Uh, subscription, subscription is not supported, but it's up to you. If you have a back-end service and you can manage your subscriptions, then that's actually available then. And there is another thing, so um, signed. Uh, transaction responses are not supported. So if your back-end infrastructure um, scans those signed responses and evaluates them, you will need to implement uh, a, a distinction from where are they coming. Are they coming from a BlackBerry device or coming from um, another device? Uh, you, you, how to, how, to, how to, to know if uh, the request is coming from BlackBerry device or not? There is an example here with that get property or S name. QNX is our operating system on which BlackBerry 10 is built. Push. Um, uh, we, we mapped or we adapted, let's say, um, Cloud 2 device messaging to our own push service. However, you have to register at BlackBerry for using the push service. Uh, when you register your signing keys, you can't get applications running on hardware without getting signed, BlackBerry signed. And when you register for push, your signing keys will get the capability to use push at all. So you have to do that step. Uh, then you have to create a configuration file and add it to your bar file. Applications in BlackBerry 10 are zipped in an archive, which we call it BlackBerry archive bar file. It's actually a zip file. You have to, to, to create a config file, CFG file, and put your, uh, your ID, which you get when you register for push in that file, and then zip it with the rest of uh, the assets. And then um, there is a slight modification you need to do into in your manifest file. Uh, we have on the web page actually instructions how to do it. And the last thing, uh, because, because you are sending a push notification to uh, an Android application and the Android infra push infrastructure, I think uh, it, um, it lets you define your push content in a JSON object. You have a key and a value. In BlackBerry, we don't actually we don't uh, we don't have any uh, um, any restrictions on the content. So you can have um, um, binary data or whatever data. But because it's an Android application, you have to to change the the push data you are sending uh, in a way that it is presented in a JSON object. Of course, in your push uh, in your infrastructure, you have to divert uh, the push then to the BlackBerry push server, then and not to the Google push server anymore. Okay, basic development. So uh, we have actually how to convert your application. There are several ways. I would say there are three ways. The first one is the online conversion tool. I will show you that live now. Then there is the Eclipse plugin. We have a BlackBerry Eclipse plugin for the ADT. I will show you that as well. That's actually the most convenient way to do it for developers because you have the possibility to debug, to set breakpoints, and to, 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 to test here, to, um, to optimize your application. And uh, of course, uh, we, we, um, if you are, let's say, if you have a bunch of, of applications, I don't know, you are an, an agency creating a lot of Android applications, you would like to do them with, uh, to do the conversion with batch tools, we support that as well. We have command line tools and um, um, for conversion and for deploying to devices then. And you, if you don't have a hardware to test with, uh, the simulator uh, is a, a great help. And it's not an emulator, it's really a simulator because the OS is running in VMware. I will show you that as well. Okay, code signing, I said it before, so you can't have a, a sub program running on a hardware without being signed, unless you have a debug token installed on your hardware so that you can develop even if you are offline. And that's actually an evaluation, evolution from the old platform. The, the old BlackBerry platform, it wasn't possible to sign applications if you weren't online. Now, with the notion of uh, the debug token, you can work offline. On the, the, only the last step, when you think everything is fine, you have to go online and sign, sign your application and bring it to the hardware. 
Okay, so uh, let me show you then the online conversion tool. So if you if you go to the uh, to the developer.blackberry.com slash Android page, micro page, you will land here. And here you have tools, documentation, API support, which I mentioned at the beginning. So I click on tools here. Uh, you see them here listed, the Eclipse plugin, as I said, the online tool and the command line tools. Let's check the online tool. Okay, it asks here for email address to avoid some misuse, etc. Okay, set applet permission. Okay, now I have to point the tool to the location where I have my APK. I prepared here two two of them. One is a good case and one is a bad case. Let's say let's take this one. Here and here. F. Then uh, you have to uh, to tell uh, the tool where is your Android SDK installed. If you de if you actually define the uh, Android Home global environment variable, then it will find it automatically. Just as a small hint. Then you click on Start Test. What happens now in the background is actually nothing uh, complicated. So your manifest file of the APK is being evaluated against the list of APIs which we don't support. Uh, and the, we should see the results in a moment here. Everything is green, so the BlackBerry 10 compatible and BlackBerry Playbook compatible. So actually, my APK file here is ready now to be converted to a BlackBerry application. And the tool here offered me that option as well. It says here, repackage and submit. So if I click on that, I will let him, the tool, know what are my signing keys or if I have configured my computer for signing at all. If I didn't do that, it will guide me through, the, through that process. It will bring you to the site where you can order signing keys, etc. So, but uh, probably uh, we don't do it now. <laughs> I'd like to show you the uh, bad case. So, I have here uh, the an, an APK which I know it's not compatible with the runtime. So, I start the test. I think the, uh, the the longer the uh, your manifest file, the uh, probably longer it takes here the evaluation. Okay, so now it says here, so your application is not compatible with the BlackBerry runtime for Android, and it uh, it lists here uh, the issues which it found. So the first one it says, okay, um, uh, you are using Android hardware Bluetooth, which is not supported by the runtime. I said it at the beginning as well. Uh, the impact level actually tells the severity of the issue. So um, issues one to two actually they are seen as uh, not, a, not, not a problem in your application is compatible with uh, BlackBerry. Uh, up uh, three, four, and five, there are severe issues. So either we would recommend that you edit your, pro um, yeah, that you change your logic a little bit, at least to get rid of the, some, of the, uh, some of the errors. Uh, the online tool here doesn't allow me now to create a bar file, a BlackBerry archive. It says, okay, you have to download the BlackBerry plugin for ADT and do some debugging, etc. Um, but the, on the other tools, the, the command line tool or um, the Eclipse tool, it, I can force them to create a bar file nonetheless, even if I have 20 f errors, whatever. I can always, with using the tools, create a bar file and test it on the hardware and see how heavy it is. But the online tool, it's, uh, it's done this way, that it stops now after listing the issues. Yeah. But the next one is, uh, you, okay, the permission disabled keyboard is not supported. That's not, uh, I think, an issue as well. But the last one is, uh, is heavy. It says, okay, your, your program is using native code. And I said it at the beginning as well, we don't support native, we don't allow native. So uh, what happens then, latest, if I force now the creation of a BlackBerry application, latest when this library, this native library is initialized, I will have a crash. But if that, uh, that uh, library never gets initialized because the feature is hidden somewhere in my program, then probably the user will not face that issue. But um, anyway, five is very uh, severe. That's the, the first the first way to do it, and probably the uh, we recommend to do it the um, just to get an, uh, an idea how how much work um, uh, do I need to invest to get my BlackBerry into um, um, 
to, to get my Android application to BlackBerry. And uh, as I said at the beginning, so we estimate 70% of, um, of the Google Play applications are compatible with the runtime. So the next one would be through the Eclipse plugin. And, yep, five minutes. Oh, okay, time is running out. <laughs> um, for the Eclipse plugin, actually, I have uh, loaded the program here, which is an open source by by Google API demos, a lot of you you know it. So th uh, the first thing you should do is to cr to to um, to give your project, your Android project, a BlackBerry nature. What happens here actually is only that some features in moment in uh, in Eclipse are enabled. Then, so your source code is not touched, but you will see things like, for example, here sign for uh, for sign your your application or verify it, verify the APK. Here you see the same the same the things. Uh, the the same th things which we we uh, we saw before with the online tool are done. So the the uh, investigations of the, of the manifest file, and you see here I have some issues here. For example, it tells me media player. Uh, what is it uh, here? I have to use a better size for my icon, or uh, using the camera is only allowed from tablet OS version two onwards. That's an important information when you upload your application. So upward, you have to know from which version onwards is certain features supported. You don't. You can't support. Uh, every old um, OS um, uh, version. Um, then, actually, you 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 work as if you are working for your Android application. That means you can uh, you can set breakpoints, you can do uh, loggings and everything you are used to do. The only one difference is that you have a new ta new target, which is BlackBerry. Then, and that target it can be the simulator or it can be the hardware. So, if it's the simulator, as I said in the beginning, so the simulator runs in a, as a virtual machine in VMware. And uh, along with the simulator, there is a small utility, which we call it the controller. Uh, you can uh, you can um, provoke, let's say, signals, for example, GPS, or you can uh, Im I don't know here buttons, press volume up, volume down, or you can change the the size of the simulator and stuff like this. Then, so the program is now loaded into the simulator. So um, well, probably some of you are fam uh, are familiar with that program here, just to. Sh Let's just show you the OpenGL. No, not this one. I, I said the, we actually hardware accelerated all OpenGL because we did that as well for the simulator. And uh, you actually can see the uh, difference between the Android emulator here and the simulator is running in, in BlackBerry here. Uh, the last possibility you, 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 you can use is through uh, through the command line. Now let me go back to the slides. Um, uh, you, so it doesn't matter if you are using a PC or a Mac, the, the tools are available, the command line tools. So with the utility APK to bar verifier, you can have the, in, the output which, which we saw in the online converter, you can have it as well in the console and you see what's, go what's going on, how many issues do I have from which impact. Uh, with the utility APK do bar, you force the creation of the bar file, as I said, independent of the results then. With the uh, utility uh, 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 the signer, you can sign your application and you can deploy it as well. You can do that as well in a batch. Uh, what else can I tell you? Okay. Um, yeah, that's probably another thing. If you, if, you, if you don't like the typing in the console, we have a small utility which we call the BlackBerry Tablet OS Graphical Aid. Not a very convenient name, I would say, but it's easy to find. If you Google for BlackBerry Tablet OS Graphical Aid, you will find it. So it actually is, it, it, it does the same as in the console. So if you, you click on Build Android, you, ch you can choose the APK, you can check the compatibility, you can uh, sign your application and deploy it directly. But it supports a little bit more, so it can even create your web or package your web content or your air, air content and uh, deploy it to the uh, simulator or to the hardware, depends uh, which IP address you give. Um, yeah, um, so it's finished. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so actually, it, uh, unfortunately, half an hour is really a short time. But uh, me and Don, we have a stand. We have BlackBerry stand. So if you have your APK file with you and you would like to get that checked, just come to us and we do it with you with our tools. Uh, otherwise, uh, probably uh, worth to mention as well the BlackBerry. Um, BlackBerry World is a global market. It's available in more than 100, 170 countries. 
and there are really independent investigations which show that Android developers makes up to 40% more revenues with the same application in BlackBerry world than in other markets then. So I would say it's worth for you because it's almost zero investment and you gain a new user base and use a new market then to experiment with. It can be very worthwhile. We have a lot of success stories then. We can talk about that. Just come to our stand and let's chat together then. Thank you very much. Then. Thank you.